That's right, I'm back. After a year off of doing these podcasts, I decided to bring it back. And now I'm doing all horror movies. For the five people that followed the the, the podcast before, I, I mostly no, I mostly did horror movies, so that's all I'm doing now. All horror, all the time. Uh, if you're wondering why I didn't continue with the the record attempt last year, uh, basically Guinness decided to change the rules on me, and there's nothing I could really do about it, so I had to stop. But um, oh well, screw them. Uh, but uh, life goes on, and I'm going to keep doing this show because that's what I want to do. So um, what we're going to do with this show, I'm going to do uh, eight films, eight all horror films per show, uh, generally a couple new releases, and then a retro movie from at least pre-1990, so uh, and then just a bunch of miscellaneous films in between. And since I'm only doing eight per show, I can kind of give a little bit more info and go go a little deeper into them. So uh, that should be interesting. My rating system I decided to use is uh, uh, starting from the bottom. It'll be at the bottom would be dumpster fire garbage. Up from there will be can't quite recommend, and then above that is okay if you're desperate. Then um, above that is put on your watch list, and then at the very top is put on top of your watch list. I know, it's it's five five seconds of thought went into this list. But, um, so, uh, why not? Let's get started. Uh, no, the first movie. Well, actually, the first one, two, three films were on the Eight Films to Die For series, which lasted several years, and they stopped doing that series, but um, many of them I have not watched. Mostly because they're mediocre, but some some are okay. Like Mungo Lake was one of them. That's a great film, but a lot of them are just kind of meh. But um, the, the first one was a uh, Penny Dreadful from 2006, directed by Richard Brands, who went on to co-produce Creepers Creepers 3. Uh, it starred Rachel Miner, who was uh, who went on to star in Black Dahlia, and you may remember her from that movie Bully, where they. The ten kids decided to gang up and kill the bully. And uh, she also was in a lot of TV work. But um, the movie itself was, was, was interesting. I also co-starred Mimi Rogers. Mimi Rogers, who spent most of this film as a corpse. But uh, anyway, I'm getting off topic again. Uh, it was about this girl who uh, had a horrific incident in a car where her, her parents... I'm not giving away anything you don't see in the trailer. Uh, where her, her parents were killed in an auto accident, and she's scared to death of being in cars, so her therapist, I guess, Mimi Rogers, is taking her on this trip, this road trip, in a car, so she can face her fears. And, if, and along the way, they, they run over this hitchhiker, and they give the hitchhiker a ride, and they quickly realize this hitchhiker is weird. And they drop the hitchhiker off, and then immediately the car has a flat tire. And <laughs> then uh, Mimi Rogers decides, I'm going to go hoof it to a gas station or wherever and get some help. So this girl's all alone, in the dark, in a car that she hates, <laughs> with this <laughs> strange hitchhiker out there, and no one to protect her. And yeah, not bad. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has an audience rating of this at 35%. I thought it was okay. It's an okay if you're desperate film. The problem with this was it gave away a little too much. Either you'd have to watch it to understand what I'm saying, but trust me when I say this. Either you don't give away anything or you give away everything but there's kind of a fuzzy in between. This kind of jumped into the fuzzy in between. It just it gave you just a little, little, little much information that you really didn't need to make it better. And it kind of made it worse. But it's still not bad. So yep, yeah, okay if you're desperate. Penny dreadful. Not to be confused with that TV show that was on Showtime for years and years, which came out several years later. Next film. This was a good film. Also part of the 
eight films to die for a series bastard. This uh, newlywed couple were uh, going across. They're 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 not just a newlywed couple. They're also killers. They're like stone cold serial killers, and they pick up this brother sister that are running away from home, and they've got some secrets too, and they end up going to this weird little secluded campgrounds, I guess. And then quickly things spiral out of control, and things get really gruesome really quick. And and you don't find out to the last couple seconds why it's called Bastard, but then it makes sense. But it's also got the most gruesome birthing scene I've ever seen. Ever. I'm, I've seen some bad birthing scenes, but this is... This is uh, Rotten Tomatoes has an audience rating of this at 42%. I say this belongs on the watch list. Not at the top, but it belongs on the watch list. Some, if you like horror, you should watch this eventually. It's good. It has no critic ratings, because I guess no critics have watched this. But um, anyway, yeah, I enjoyed that movie. Uh, next one. Mulberry Street, 2007. <sighs> Excuse me, not... Eight films to die for, seven films to die for. I think some years it was eight films to die for, but this one was seven films to die for. Um, critic rating of 70%, audience rating 37. That's usually reverse. But um, a lot of. I, I saw some lists, and it had this series of horror films listed best to worst, and usually this movie, Mulberry Street, was towards the top, so I expected something good, and that's not what I got. Here's the gist. People in this building, well, I guess it's kind of worldwide or regional what's going on, but it focuses on this one building, and people are getting bit by rats, and then turning into rats. Yep, that's it. Then they start biting other people and yada yada yada. Whole lot of nothing. So I uh, I would say I can't quite recommend this, even though the 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 the, the violence is fun, but still, it's just not not a good movie. Not I no not good. Um. Next film. We're getting away from the, the, the seven or eight films to die for. This is a, this is another independent one. Enter Nowhere from 2011. Starring Clint Eastwood's son, Scott Eastwood, who looks just like his daddy. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes says this has an audience rating of 47, 49%, excuse me. I can't believe it's that high. This movie was... Rude. How much of the shit do I have to listen to? <sighs> These two people are out in this cabin in the middle of nowhere. And they can't figure out how or where they got there. Then this other chick shows up. And then gradually and partially they start to put the pieces together of what's going on and what they have in common. And then, once you realize what's going on, you realize, hey, I, I don't care. I don't, I don't care what happens to these people. I'm calling you a liar and a cheat and a fat, porky son of a bitch. I don't like any of them. None of them are good. None of them are really that nice. We just happen to stumble upon each other in this quinky dink. <sighs> yep, expected a little, a little better from. Spawn of Clint Eastwood. Yeah, that was complete dumpster fire garbage. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Clove Hitch Killer, 2018, starring Dylan McDermott. I'm glad Dylan McDermott has finally realized he's not a leading man in Hollywood anymore, so he's starting to kind of go off in different directions and try different films. Kind of like what Colin Farrell's going through. He's done some really crazy movies like uh, the, the Killing of the Sacred Deer, 
and lobster, which was really strange, which is refreshing, you know. He can't be, you know, leading me in forever, so you got to do different stuff. And that's what Dylan McDermott is doing here. He's trying different things. He's a, a serial killer, basically. Well, he was a retired serial killer, and he took several years off to raise a family. And he's got this nice wife and children, and he decides to get going again. And uh, <laughs> at, this film took a different direction about one-third of the way through, thank God. Because it started off as kind of the like, like a rear window or a, that Shia LaBeouf movie Disturbia or more recently a summer of 84 where it's kind of like, is what's going on really going on or is this the main character just kind of projecting what's going on? Nope, decides not to go in that direction. The film takes a complete left turn, but it was fine. It was still enjoyable. Very good. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes has the critics... Gave this a 77% audience rating at 68%. I would say put this on your watch list. Nice little film. I don't think you'll find it anywhere streaming at the moment. But, um, yeah. When you get to it, you get to it. But it's a good movie. Um, next movie. Next two movies, actually. I found on a list of best Irish horror films. So I just said, and these were like the top two. So I decided I gotta see these, and I hadn't seen them before. Uh, the f <laughs> the first one was called The Lodgers, which you can find on Netflix, I believe, right now, uh, from 2018. Um, so close to being great, so close, so close. Um, this brother sister, they um. Uh, they're living alone in this huge mansion. I guess their parents have died. It doesn't tell you a whole lot. It needed some more backstory. It needed some more flashbacks. It needed to know a little bit more what's going on. But they had this creepy little nursery rhyme of the rules to what to follow in the house and what to do and what not to do. And they had to follow the rules or else things start crawling out of the basement. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then um, apparently they went bankrupt. So the, the, the guy that the banker or whatever came to the house and says you got to sell this house and get out and they're like we can't not that we don't want to we can't <laughs> so uh yeah it was it was interesting um the critic rating was 55 percent. the audience rating was 44 it, it, yeah like i said it was almost great yeah I, I, i'd still put it on the watch list i thought it was fine um then the other film of the supposed best Irish horror films was actually the best thing I've seen this week. Hole in the Ground. What's wrong? You're not my son. Tell me the truth. I am. Stop lying. I'm not lying. Uh, critic rating of 88%. There was no audience rating for some reason, but a 2019 movie. And, uh, <laughs> this boy and this mom, they're just living on their own, and uh, they decided to move, and the boy goes wandering off in the woods, and he finds this little, not a little hole, it's a huge football field-sized hole that's just like constantly sinking. But anyway, he goes. He finds this hole, then he gets lost, and then mom finds him, and the boy starts to change, and he starts acting weird, like weird, and eventually mom thinks something's going on, and uh, <laughs> and she's looking at him. There's one great scene where she's just looking at him, and the the, the, the son, who's like seven years old. It's like, you want to ask me something, but you don't have the guts to ask me, so don't even bother. And she's just staring at him like, you are not my son. You are you are off your rocker. You are. But yeah, this was an excellent little film. Real simple, not very long. It's like an hour and 20 minutes, but um, very well made. I would say put this at the top of the watch list for sure. And then we got The Prowler. 
This is our retro movie. Did I mention that? I don't know if I did. From 1981, uh, critic rating 67%, audience rating 49%, directed by Joseph Zito, who went on to direct the Friday the 13th movie with Corey Feldman, if you remember that. But um, this was a very basic slasher film. It was one of those slasher films where um, they didn't show anything. They just kind of showed like the knife coming up and down, and maybe some blood splatter on the wall. And that's it was, this is what happens is this masked guy who obviously has some kind of military background because he always wears camouflage. But um, he's going around killing kids, killing teenagers. Whether at this prom or this party, when there's only six characters in your movie, it's pretty, pretty easy to figure out who the masked guy is by process of elimination. But um, yeah, I'd say it's it's okay if you're desperate, if you're into, if you're in a nostalgia mood, then maybe go for it. But um, yeah, one of the, that's that's it for this group. Yeah, so that was fun. Um, on the next show, we will have these movies. We'll have, instead of eight films, we'll have seven films. And season three of The Slasher to review. We'll have The Tunnel, The Lighthouse, The Little Stranger, which I'm looking forward to. Stars Dom Hall Gleason, son of Brendan Gleason, who's, who's one of my favorite actors. But Dom Hall Gleason was also in one of my favorite films ever, a non-horror film called Frank. And then um, we got Mercy Black and Malevolent, which are both on Netflix. So if you want to watch those before I review them, now's your chance. And then we got two movies by Rory Culkin. You're thinking, who the hell is Rory Culkin? Rory Culkin is the little brother of Macaulay Culkin from the Home Alone series. He's actually done a lot of really good movies. Uh, you're probably thinking Igby Goes Down. Actually, no, that was Kieran Culkin. Kieran's a little older than Rory, but they do look exactly the same. Rory's done two, I guess, uh, supposed horror thriller movies that we're going to check out called Jack Goes Home and Gabriel. So we'll check out those and, of course, season three of Slasher, like I mentioned. So that should be interesting. So, um... Until next time, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll see you later.